In this video, we will cover part two of protecting against unplanned information disclosure. We will be discussing exception handling and improving code efficiency. Let's have a look at a block of code which makes use of try and catch blocks to trap exceptions. First of all, let me draw your attention to PDO error mode options. In this option, we are specifying the error mode as exception. In the other option, we are specifying the error mode as silent. Normally, in a development environment, you would want to set the error mode to exception or warning. However, for a production environment, you may want to consider using silent mode instead. The advantage is that if there is a database error, the silent mode will not report the error, whereas exception or warning will generate the error. In order to make this effective, we need to wrap the code inside a try and catch block. On line 20, we open up the try block. From lines 21 through 32, we have the code that we wish to trap. On line 33, we have a statement specifying the type of exception that we are expecting. In this case, it's a PDO exception. If the exception is generated, the exception object is specified as $E. From there, we can get the message and send the message to an error log. If you are unsure of the exception or if there may be multiple exceptions, you can make one slight modification. We've added an additional catch block, which must go after the more specific exception. In this case, it's the generic PHP exception class itself. The reason why it must go last is that the PHP exception handler will go in order in which the catch blocks are specified. The first catch block that matches the exception is the one that's activated. All the other catch blocks are then ignored. Let's now look at the code. We are going to set the silent flag to false. What that means then is that we are going to generate an exception if there's an error. Notice the query. The query is clearly not an SQL statement. Nonetheless, we send that to the server using the PDO query method. We then try to fetch the results, which we know, of course, are going to fail. Let's now save the code and have a look at the result. Moving to the demo web page, we are running protectvulnerabilityexceptions.php. Notice there are no errors. The reason for this is that they've been trapped. However, if we look at the PHP error log, we should see the errors being properly logged. We move over to the XAMP control panel. Next to Apache, we click on Logs, PHP error log. We move down to the bottom of the screen. You can see here at the very bottom that we have an SQL error which is being reported by the database server. And of course, the reason for this is that the SQL statement is not a valid SQL statement. Let's now examine the topic of improving code efficiency. You may wonder why is this discussion included in a discussion on security. The reason is that more efficient code will generate less errors. Accordingly, it's to your advantage to generate code that is as error-free and as efficient as possible. How can this be accomplished? There are several different possibilities. One possibility is simply using the tools that are available within your integrated development environment. You'll notice even this simple editor, which is called Genie, it's an open source editor, has certain capabilities, namely the ability to color code. We can see right away that there's an open quote. You'll notice that the quoted information is in orange because we failed to close the quote. The remainder of the code is orange. If we go ahead and close the quote and end the statement, you can see that the editor identifies the fact that the code is now properly specified. Other IDEs or integrated development environments will go even further and they'll give you specific messages on the left margin telling you when there are possible problems. They will also identify misspelled functions and misspelled keywords by putting a red line underneath, much as you would see in a word processor. There are other tools available as well. One example is PHP itself from the command line. If we again move over to our XAMP control panel and we click on shell, this opens a command shell. We can now move to the directory containing the code file and use PHP itself to test for errors. In this case, we are going to be looking at the protect vulnerability improve code file. We use the minus L option 
to test for syntax errors without actually running the code. You'll notice that there are two errors which are identified. There's a fatal error on line 28. There's also an error parsing the file as well. Finally, there's another tool which is freely available, and this can be obtained from the pair.php.net website. The name of the package is php underscore code sniffer. It's open source code that tokenizes the PHP. It also works on JavaScript and CSS and detects violations of coding standards. This is somewhat useful in detecting potential problems in your code. This package can be downloaded and unzipped, or you can use pair install php underscore code sniffer. Bear in mind that XAMP by default will install pair as a command. It's simply a matter of opening up the command shell and running the command. Once you've installed the code sniffer, you can run the command from the command shell. So moving back to the command shell, we are going to analyze the same code using the code sniffer. So we type phpcs, give it the name of the file, and we have a nice readout indicating potential problems specifically with regards to violations of what are called coding standards. You may wonder why are coding standards important for security? Again, the reason for this is for improved efficiency and maintenance. This concludes our discussion of the topic protecting against unplanned information disclosure. Regarding display of errors, there's a PHP INI setting display underscore errors. It should be on for development and off for production. You can use if statements and ternary operators to affect proper error handling. You can also use set error handler and develop your own custom error handling process. Don't forget there are a number of debug commands including debug print backtrace which will give you more information about the nature of the error. Errors should definitely be logged, especially in a production environment. For this purpose, there's a command called error underscore log. There's also a parameter called error reporting and a command as well, which will allow you to set the error level to the maximum so that when you review your log, you will see as many errors as possible. Bear in mind that there is also an error log parameter in the PHP INI file that activates automatic error logging. When using object-oriented programming, you have the advantage of being able to trap exceptions rather than trying to handle errors. For this purpose, you would use the PHP exception class or custom exception classes. You would use try and catch blocks to trap the exceptions. The code should go inside the try block. The catch block would specify what's going to happen if an exception is thrown. You can have as many exception blocks as you want. However, they are in order of most specific to most general. Finally, improving code efficiency. Bear in mind that tighter code will produce fewer accidental disclosures. Your integrated development environment tools will highlight certain errors. From the command line, you can also use PHP with the minus L or the minus F option. Finally, don't forget there are several open source packages available, including PHP Code Sniffer, which will further analyze your code.